Scooby-Doo, The Rogue Robot, by Megan Cooley-Peterson, illustrated by Dario Brizuela. A cool breeze flittered off the ocean as the gang dug for clams. I can't wait to eat these clams, Shaggy said. Too bad Funland hasn't opened for the summer yet. I bet they'll have all sorts of groovy snacks. Funland looks a little spooky, Velma said. Maybe even haunted, Daphne added. Geez, Scoob, clam down, Shaggy joked. Scooby pointed toward the amusement park. Roast, he shouted. Ghost? Shaggy, Velma, and Daphne said together. This calls for an investigation, gang, Fred said. Everything's running, but no one is here, Fred exclaimed. A robot is riding the coaster. How is that possible? Daphne asked. It could be gravity, Velma said. It's a force that keeps the coaster in motion once it starts. Like, what's a force? Shaggy asked. A force is a push or a pull, Velma explained. Forces cause motion, which means gravity pulled the coaster down the first hill, Daphne said. But how did it get up the hill? I'm too hungry to solve any mysteries. Shaggy said. Let's check out that hot dog stand, Scoob. Fact file. Sir Isaac Newton, 1642 to 1727, was a scientist, astronomer, and mathematician. He studied motion. Over time, he came up with ideas about how and why objects move. Newton's ideas became known as the Three Laws of Motion. Anybody there? Can we get some service, please? Shaggy called. We'll have a plate of hot dogs to go with all the fixings. Rum, Scooby said, licking his lips. Scoob, please tell me you pushed that plate of hot dogs, Shaggy said. rot -ree, Scooby said, shaking his head. Hot dog ghosts, Shaggy yelled. Does a force always cause movement? Shaggy asked. Because those hot dogs, like, moved all by themselves. Something moved those hot dogs, Daphne said. But a force doesn't always cause emotion. Forces can cancel each other, and then the object stays still. Downward force. Upward force. Shaggy and Scooby exert a downward force on the bench, Velma explained. The bench exerts the same upward force on them. Otherwise, the bench would move? Shaggy asked. You got it, Velma said. Roo, said Scooby. Fact file. Forces in motion are always at work, even when you're asleep. The Earth revolves around the sun and spins on its axis. Depending on where you live, you may be moving around Earth's axis faster than a jet airplane. I could sit here forever, Shaggy said. This bench is, like, totally comfy. You've just described inertia, Velma said. Like, gesundheit, Shaggy said. No, inertia, Velma said. It describes how an object at rest tends to stay at rest, unless acted upon by a force. That's Newton's first law of motion. The same is true of moving objects, Fred added. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion. That means Shaggy will stay on the bench until a force moves him, Velma said. Or that robot, Daphne cried. Retro, Scooby shouted, 
pushing Shaggy off the bench. Come on, Scoob. Pick up that robot scent, Shaggy said. Row rent, Scooby said. No scent? Shaggy asked. Maybe it was a ghost. I guess ghosts don't leave a scent. Roast? Scooby asked. Shaggy pointed to the Hall of Mirrors. There he goes, Scoob. Let's follow that robo-ghost. Man, look what those hot dogs did to me, Shaggy joked. I'm stuffed. Re-roo, Scooby said. Zoinks! The robot! Shaggy cried. Let's get out of here! What are you doing? Daphne asked. Like, that robot is totally after us, Shaggy said. But look how strong we are. He doesn't stand a chance when I try to throw him. Not so fast, Velma said. An object's speed gets faster or slower based on its mass and the forces acting upon it. That's Newton's second law of motion. Those toys don't have much mass, Fred explained. No offense, guys, but it doesn't take a lot of force to move them. Fact file. Mass and weight are different. Mass is the amount of material in an object. Weight is a measure of gravity's pull on an object. Try to throw this bowling ball with the same amount of force as with the toy, Velma instructed. I can barely move it, Shaggy exclaimed. That's right, Velma said. The bowling ball has more mass than those beach balls. You must use a stronger force to accelerate it the same amount. Which means you won't be able to throw that heavy robot, Daphne added. Let's find the park's caretakers, Fred suggested. We'll get to the bottom of this. Are you the caretakers of Funland? Daphne asked. Yes. I'm Mr. Jenkins, and this is my sister Sarah. All the rides in the park are running, Fred said. And the lights are like, totally on, added Shaggy. The rides aren't running. Mr. Jenkins said, and we would have seen the lights. The moonlight played tricks on your eyes. You kids run along home, Sarah said. We're not done investigating, gang, Fred said back at the park. The taffy machine is totally haywire, Shaggy said. And who turned on the lights and rides again, Daphne asked. Scooby pointed toward the Tunnel of Love. Rook! he shouted. The robot! He's going into that ride, Fred said. Let's follow him. Zoinks! Shaggy shouted. The robot sent his raft flying. He must have magic powers. Not exactly. Forces come in pairs, Velma said. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And that is Newton's third law of motion. She's right, Fred said. The robot jumped off his raft. That's the action. Then, the raft moved in the opposite direction. That's the reaction. Look! He's getting away! Daphne cried. Reaction. Action. Like, I think your driver's license has expired. Your driving is crazy, Shaggy shouted at Velma. The steering and the brakes don't work, Velma said. I can't control the car. ruh row, Scooby said. I'll drive through that pile of taffy. Maybe friction will slow us down, Velma suggested. Holy smokes! It worked! Shaggy exclaimed. But how? The car's wheels rubbed against the ground and the sticky taffy, 
Velma explained. Friction is a kind of force. It slowed down the car. Do you hear footsteps? Velma asked. The robo-ghost! Shaggy shouted. Mr. Jenkins? Fred asked. What are you doing here? I'm here for Charlie, my robot. I built him to run the park, but it seems he went a little crazy. You can say that again, Shaggy muttered. Could you kids help me catch him? Mr. Jenkins asked. We're on the case, Fred said. We can use that magnet to pull the robot toward us. Like, how? Shaggy asked. With magnetic force, Velma explained. You can't see it. It's invisible. Just like gravity. That's right, said Daphne. A magnetic force can push or pull a magnetic object without touching it. My device says Charlie is close by, Mr. Jenkins said. Point the magnet toward the hot dog stand. Zoinks! The magnet is working, Shaggy said. I'm afraid my robot has seen better days, Mr. Jenkins said. Somebody must have really pushed his buttons, joked Shaggy. Scooby pointed toward a menacing shadow. Rook! he shouted. Who's there? Mr. Jenkins called out. Sarah? What's going on? Mr. Jenkins asked. What's going on? she huffed. You and that silly robot. I knew I couldn't convince you it was unsafe around children unless I proved it to you. I reprogrammed Charlie to show you what could happen. You sure showed him, Daphne said. That robot went totally bonkers. Now that this mystery is solved, Scoob and I will volunteer to eat up, I mean, clean up, all that taffy, Shaggy said. I'm so hungry I could, like, eat a robot. Thank <laughs> you.